Hey there creepy peeps and welcome to another new movie review. Today we're going to be talking about Wildling. First I want to say a quick thank you to my creepy patron peeps for your support of my channel. Thank you so so much. If you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep you can follow that link in the description. All right, so a little summary of Wildling. Anna spends her entire childhood under the care of a mysterious man she only knows as daddy. He keeps her locked in an attic, making her fear the Wildling, a child-eating monster that roams the outside. At age 16, Anna is freed by small town sheriff Ellen Cooper, who helps her start a new life as a normal teenager. But as Anna's body begins to blossom, her childhood nightmares return with a vengeance, leading to the conclusion of a terrifying secret. All right, so let's get into what I liked about this one. Um, first and foremost, I thought the performances were really, really good. Um, the actress that plays Anna, Belle Pauli, I've not seen her in anything else before, but I think she did a really great job. We have Liv Tyler, who plays the sheriff, Ellen Cooper, who she's just really good at anything. And I did notice in the movie, like, I feel like... <laughs> Liv Tyler is just like a real life elf, you know, from Lord of the Rings. Like, I feel like she's immortal and just doesn't freaking age because she looks exactly the same. And then we also have the character of Daddy, who is played by Chucky star Brad Dorif, who is, he's just endlessly creepy. Like, <laughs> like he's the last person I would ever call Daddy and for some reason that just like, makes it a even creepier. I don't know, and I feel like, <laughs> I just feel like he wasn't even trying to be all that creepy. Like, for the most part, he seemed kind of normal, but it was just like the situation, I guess, was creepy. I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm describing it like that. You guys haven't seen the movie or anything, but I also really loved the scenery of the movie. Um, at least from what I could tell, it looks like pretty much everything was filmed in New York. Like, it looks very like upstate New York, obviously not in New York City or anything. The movie does have a lot to do with nature. Nature is a very heavy theme in the movie because Anna is kept locked away in an attic for the first like 16 years of her life. You know, there's something in nature that calls to her but is yet slightly dangerous because you know her father has filled her head with all of these stories of the wildling if she even dares set foot outside the wildling will eat her um, so there's a very heavy theme of like something that calls to Anna about the wild and nature and the forest and yet something dangerous. So there's a lot of shots of the trees and just looking deep into the forest. And it's all very like beautiful and green and lush. And I don't know, I really liked it. If you have seen the trailer um, or if you want to check out the trailer, I'll link the trailer below. Um, I feel like it makes it very apparent that this is kind of like a werewolf movie. I'll just leave it at that. Those of you have seen the movie know what I'm talking about um, <laughs> and why that may or may not be accurate, but you know. I liked the, the very slow transformation of Anna. So like I said in the summary, once she is kind of released into the real world, she begins this transformation. It all has to do with her hitting puberty, of course, as most female-centered werewolf stories are usually has to do with puberty so there's that classic theme of you know women literally transforming when they hit puberty um, and I think there's like kind of an added layer to that because of Anna's relationship with her daddy I think there's something to be said about how um, he kind of wants to keep her this cute little girl for reasons that I won't talk about for spoilers um, but there are reasons why he wants to keep her this cute little girl and I think it's a fear that probably like most parents have with their kids in general not just their their daughters that they, you know they want to keep you know you want to keep your kid a kid for as long as you can I love how I'm saying I'm talking about it like I have a child they don't because there's something very distinct that changes about them when they hit puberty and they start moving into adulthood um, and they can kind of become wild. Um, <laughs> and I think this movie speaks to that a lot. Uh, I like how it kind of went a little bit deeper than kind of like the surface level, like, oh, female getting her period is like changing into a werewolf every month, you know, when the full moon rises, yeah. It's a great theme, 
we've just, we've been there a lot. So I like how this movie went a little bit deeper. Like I was saying, I like how Anna's transformation is very slow. It's not, it's very unlike a werewolf movie where when the full moon rises, you get the full transformation. Her transformation is very, very slow. Um, and I kind of like that because I felt like it paralleled going through puberty and actually moving into adulthood. It's a slow process. You don't just, <laughs> it's not like just overnight you go through puberty and then you're an adult. That's not how it works. Puberty is a long, awful, awkward time. I like that. You know, there's a lot of bodily changes, which also, you know, the movie does touch on as well, obviously, as Anna's transforming, um, a lot of bodily changes and things like that. And yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys get what I'm talking about with this movie. I liked that. <laughs> The only thing I can talk about without spoiling anything that I disliked with this movie um, was that it had so much going on and I honestly think it probably would have been way better as a television series than a movie. I feel like there was so much to unpack with this movie and just so much going on that everything just feels like it went super fast. Like there's there's very distinct parts to this movie. So we have the beginning of the movie where Anna is growing up and she's locked in the attic um, and then she is saved. Um, so then we have the section of the movie where Anna's kind of like being, you know, you know, she's seeing society for the first time. So she's adapting to being a teenager and learning all these things and experiencing all these things that she didn't know about because all she's seen are the four walls of her attic. And we have her transforming and all like the scary bits that come along with that. And then there is a part after she's transformed and there's just a lot of parts, like a lot of sections to this movie. And I feel like because there are so many parts to this story, it just breezes through all the parts. <laughs> I kind of just wish that it took its time more, but then I, you know, it would be an extra, extra long movie. So that's why I say I think it would work really well as a television series, like honestly. Um, <laughs> and people love teen dramas, you know, and this would be perfect for that, honestly. Uh, I love how I'm talking about all these deep things about the movie, but this is me like, just like inferring that from the movie. Like I'm, that's me kind of just like analyzing what I saw. Um, it does brush over these things really fast, but once you've seen so many movies of this nature, you kind of pick up on the common themes and stuff. So there were a few bits of very noticeable CGI. You know, it's just kind of like that not great CGI that sticks out like a sore thumb. It's kind of a nitpicky thing. Um, I think there was one instance of stop motion animation. I couldn't really tell, like the part happens so fast that I couldn't really, it's, and it's just one part where I noticed it, where it kind of looked like stop motion animation, which was kind of cool, but I can't for sure say if it was or not, because I don't know. All right, so was Wildling worth it? Perhaps. <laughs> um, I think there's a lot there. I think there's, like I said, there is really a lot to unpack with this movie. I feel like you could really like go deep with this movie and talk about a lot of the symbolism in the movie from the plot. Um, so that's something I'd like to explore maybe in like a blog post or maybe I'll pitch something to Morbidly Beautiful or you know. Um, I'm gonna give it a three out of five. I thought it was okay. Um, I think it's just like the, you know, the speeding through a lot of plot points is kind of just what brought that rating down for me. Um, on IMDb it has a 5.8 out of 10, and on Rotten Tomatoes it has a 75% critic score and a 59% audience score, nothing on Roger Ebert. Um, the only way I was able to find this to watch it was via YouTube for $7 rental, so <laughs> definitely check out the trailer and see if it interests you before, you know, before checking it out. Anyways, yeah, so I'll leave a link to the movie on YouTube in the description box that is not an affiliate link. So if you've seen Wildling, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye.